Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, how's it going? Happy Thursday. <laughs> You're already retracting messages, Elena. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Hi, Shanika. Hi, Dar. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Um, so I did my fitting sample of these shorts yesterday. Well, the pants, I did a shorts version. And then I couldn't help but share it yesterday because I spontaneously stitched the back pockets because um, I planned on, I, I didn't plan on, I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, I need, I want to do a little sample. What do I have that has some stretch? And I have these like weird pieces of denim left over from making jeans. And so I kind of puzzle pieced it and got a pair in there. And then I was like, well, if I'm making denim, I could do a fun pocket design. And so um, Libby gave me this idea a long, uh, not a long time ago. Um, well, I mean, no, I mean like I, a few months ago, I, I asked her, I was like, hey, how did you do that? And she, she said, oh, I look for continuous line drawings. And I was like, that's genius. So I finally got around to it because she showed me some that she did with poppies on the back. And we're both Californians and poppies are state flower, quills are state bird, and I love quills. So <laughs> yeah, no worries, Elena. I saw, I saw the first half of, your, half of your message before you retracted it. So thanks for lurking. You know, you're always welcome. Um, all right, so here's my little quail pair, and I just, I love these little, I love quail, you guys. I feel like if you don't know quail, then you probably are like, that's a funny looking bird, but they are just so cute in real life, and they just are, the boys are the ones with the little dangly thing above their head, and they're really funny um, to watch. They're just these little plump little things walking around, and the babies are like, the size of golf balls. Um, you can't even see them. You just see the parents are acting a little bit more cautious. And then you're like, oh, there's there's babies. They're just shorter than the blades of grass. And the, the there's usually like two dads and two moms and because they, they like group up. It's so adorable. And the, the little dads will get on a rock and there's one at the front, one at the back. And then they're like, all right, come on. And the moms and the babies are kind of just like eating and doing stuff. And then there's always a straggler. It's I love it. And they and they have babies like for like a few months, so they're always around. Hey Hannah, hey Terry. Okay, so um, I'm really excited about making these. This is we're making the Peaks and Valley pants by Decades of Style. I have a um, tester version of the pattern, so I don't have like the cute like pattern envelope, but this is what they look like. And then there's a couple of really important things to note that these are made in a stretch woven and they are pull on pants and they're pretty fast to sew. So um, they, the sizing is, 
There's a lot of sizes. So it goes from a 26 inch waist to a 46 inch waist, a 35 inch hip to a 55 inch hip. I made a straight up 16 yesterday in the shorts and I didn't change anything. Yep, I didn't change anything uh, except uh, the sewing construction on the waist. And so I fit mine to me and um, I have definitely some ideas on what I wanna do. And I have some ideas. Hi, Ray. <laughs> I meant to text you, Ray, today or message you today. Hi, Nicole. Why can't I see all of chat? Why, why is... Yes, Nicole. That's what these shorts are. Maybe if I do this, I'll get all of the chat. I usually like seeing a little bit of the stream so I know that it's going. <laughs> I'm not just talking to myself, which, I, you know, the first few streams, I thought I was. But, but Nancy, who's been here since the get-go, I, I think a couple of you. Oh, I know why it's covering it up, because I have downloads at the bottom. Let's get rid of those. There we go. That's a little better. All right, so, um, yeah. So I used stretch denim. The stretch woven that you need is a 20% stretch, and this was barely a 20% stretch, and so is my... Japanese cotton ripstop stuff that I got from Maker's Fabric. So um, I am definitely kind of <laughs> stretching the bounds of this, <laughs> pun intended. Hi, Malin, how's it going? Thanks, thanks. Yeah, so, so here are my initial thoughts on making these. Oh, and I have some pictures of me wearing them. Ta-da! So the left and the right pictures, I was in my office yesterday and I threw that shirt on that I have here. And then in the middle was this morning, like straight out of bed, I put a t-shirt on and I tried these on. So here is my thoughts right now. So I really need shorts, so I'm pretty excited that these come in a shorts version. I really like them. Hi, Laura, how's it going? Hi, Hannah. Piscataue, Blant, Maryland. Oh, thanks for acknowledging that. Hi, Tammy, how's it going? Yay, made it. So um, here are my thoughts. So I made a straight up 16 um, and my like tummy hip area is, like my tummy is pretty big right now compared like in relation to other areas of my body. I hide it really well. So do you see the leg circumference at the back? I feel like they're really full in the back. So I feel like these shorts could be a little bit shorter on me to be a little more flattering. Um, and if I did that, the bot the hem seems pretty big. And that's because I had to pick such a big size. So I also needed to cinch in the waist a little bit because when I get above my belly, then I need to cinch it in a little bit more. So I have some thoughts on that too. So I think what I would like to do is I'm gonna make the size 16 at the top, but I'm going to grade the lower half like hip and below, I think I'm gonna use the size 14, maybe even down to the 12. Um, they are a very straight cut pant. They look really cute on folks in the hashtag. Every pair I've seen looks really cute on folks of all different sizes. And um, the other thing I wanna note is that you need one and a quarter inch wide elastic. And I only used one inch wide because I thought I had a one and a quarter inch wide. I swear I bought a roll of that and it was one inch. Do you remember when I did that? I think I bought that and I was like, oh, I need this. And I didn't, I have one inch. I thought I had three quarter inch and I needed one inch. I already had one inch and I bought more. So I'm swimming in that stuff. So, um, also, I want to mention, okay, there are pockets too. Let's, we can look at the inside. That um, Decades of Style sent me this pattern for free. She wanted me to test it. She asked if I would. And I just couldn't during the time that she needed it because we were doing all the menswear. And, but I just said, hey, I'll do a stream. So she gave me the pattern. And then she also gave you guys a coupon code, right? <laughs> this is so weird. Right here uh, for 20% off. And that's like a little secret sale. So it works on everything on her website. 
um, and on the PDF version of everything, and then the print and the PDF version of the Peaks and Valley pants. So if you want a print version, go for it. So, um, and then here I'm gonna put a link to her website in the, in the chat. I've made a few of her patterns and I've really liked all of them. Can I just right left or like left click? Yeah, copy, there we go. My, my uh, I use my mouse with my left hand usually. So, there we go. I have it in my right hand, but I mean, my mouse buttons are <laughs> reversed. That's why I said left click, okay. So there is the Decades of Style link to her website, and then it's PDF 20 for that. And it's good through August 15th. So there was a public sale, it ended on the 7th, and then this one's just for you guys. So, um, so thanks to her, to Janet, that was really nice of her. I love it when you guys get a discount code. It makes me feel like the pattern company acknowledges that we're spending time on their pattern. Why can't I see all of my chat? Okay, maybe if I do that, there we go. I don't like that though, I can barely see it. Yeah, so um, do you guys remember when I sewed the butterfly blouse? Um, I love that blouse. It's the white blouse always on my dress form over there. Um, and I, I even wore it with the shorts yesterday, but I don't have a belt here with it. I never finished it. All it needs is a belt. <laughs> um, the reason I didn't do it, didn't finish it, is because I felt like the linen was a little too heavy for that. That was just my bad. I'm gonna tone down the, it's a little bright. It just is, it feels, it feels like it's getting brighter and brighter. Uh, it might, yeah, there we go. We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and we also did the uh, bias cut apron that Hart sent us, so Hart sent us both those. Oh, and we did the um, 1940s dress. Remember that one? It was like gray with the white pinstripe, super cute. Really cute. Yeah, and what I really love is that there is a real vintage, strong vintage style with the patterns, but when you start looking at the hashtags and you see how some folks wear it or make them in like a modern style, like a modern fabric, it really changes the look, so. Really fun, really, really nicely drafted. I don't know if I said hi to you, Donna, but hello, and hello, Nicole. I'm not sure if I said hi to you. I feel like I did, maybe I did it, I don't know. So, so anyway, um, yeah. So here is the back, very simple patch pockets. Front has um, just hand pockets. The waistband, I did not sew it the way she recommends it. So what I did was I sewed my waistband together. I still left the opening like she recommends for the elastic insertion right here. Sorry, now I made it too dark, huh? Let's see, maybe I could do this. And uh, then I just overlocked the waistband to the shorts. This is a very easy, fast way. If you want a quick and dirty way to sew these, that'd be the way. Uh, she has you clean finish it and zigzag it, and so I'm kind of debating on whether I'll, I will, how I'll do it, because I don't have a zigzag. So we, you know, I think I might do some tests. And probably what I'll do is top stitch this and see how it work, reacts. So another pair of pull-on jeans we've made was the Itch to Stitch Mountain View pull-ons. And that, though, we did that as a sew along a long time ago and we all loved them. <laughs> a couple of folks had some issues and didn't finish, but by and large, all of us really love it. And so. Here's another note I want you to recognize with this particular pattern. They're kind of low rise. So you can see in this picture, I'll show you my fit issues with what I'm gonna be doing. So, so you see, um, you can't really see how low those are. My shirt is barely at the top of these um, in the front. And in the back, my shirt's a little lower, but you can see this is pretty low on my backside. And I'm trying to think if I could show you other pictures. It's pretty, pretty low. Like that top, I couldn't really wear comfortably because every time I would raise my hands, it would definitely be pretty high. Um, I also have a backwards hip tilt. And so I had to tuck my underwear into my pants in the back so you didn't see them for like a good inch. <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna raise the back rise for me. 
But you, the thing is, you cannot raise the rise too much on these because the reason these work as a pull on pants in a stretch woven is because they're sitting just above the widest part of your body. So if you made it so narrow that they fit the narrower part of your waist, like raise the rise up, you're probably not gonna be able to get those over your hips unless you use a much stretchier fabric, okay? Yeah, right, Melinda, they're so awesome. So it's kind of a similar principle. Yeah, so um, anyway, let's get to it. Let's do some pattern adjustments. Um, but yeah, I think like, I think I could actually shorten these about that much. That looks kind of short, but remember, um, they, I don't know, I, my husband was like, they look fine that length, but I felt like they looked a little bit old, old fashioned <laughs> when I did that, when I had them like this on me because I, I'm kind of short-waisted. So um, I'm gonna raise my rise about, a, I'm a, a good fat inch and taper it to the front. And I'm going to cut out the size 16 from about here up and then I'm gonna taper to, I'm gonna try and taper all this out. Because I, I could do this, I could squeeze it. I wish I could do this in the back, all right? I'm gonna wear the heck out of these though, I can already tell. Um, I'm also leaving my hole for the elastic insertion um, because when I get my one and a quarter inch um, elastic, I'm probably gonna put that in there. So right now I'm just using one inch elastic in there. You know, one thing I'll tell you, I need, I need a safety pin. I had to use a hair clip to get my elastic in the waistband because I don't have a single safety pin in my office. <laughs> I know that's really weird. <laughs> All right, I did a fringe seam pocket. I used my um, pocket fabric samples. That's not the final, the final. This one I think is the right one, but this one I think, um, oh no, no, I used the same one, yeah, so. All right, let's get to it. Here's my fabric. I'm using this stretch cotton rip stop and this stretch poplin. I got this one from Maker's Fabric and I got this one from Hearts Fabric. I'm only gonna use this for the peaks at the hems down here. That you can use them as behind the pocket as well. I'm not going to. Yes, these are the, I made the straight up size 16 Tammy, Tammy with no alterations. So that is the length you get. And this is what, did you see what they look like on me? This is what they look like on me. They're not short shorts. I, I kind of wanted them shorter. So this, that, that is the shorts. The right hand picture looks shorter, but when you look at me straight on, look at the backs. So they're, they're not short shorts. Yeah, so, um, and then there's, you can, you know, there's no contrast at all in the shorts either, so. All right. So yeah, if you wanna do like a muslin and you have some extra fabric that's the same stretch to what you're gonna be doing, you could totally do that. So this is my idea now. I think I, if I have enough of this, cause I didn't know I was gonna be using this for these pants. I ordered this before she had contacted me. I ordered this like the day she contacted me. I think I wanna make, remember when I made the uh, blue A dress by Deer and Doe? I wanna make a blouse version of that in this fabric. Do you think that's kind of too busy? I think that would look nice. And I could wear it with these pants. It'd be so matchy matchy. <laughs> I say that like it's a good thing. <laughs> All right. Oh, and look, okay, so I don't know if Libby's here, but here's my tip. If you guys are gonna do like continuous line drawings, I'm gonna post a video of how I did, did this because I recorded it. Um, I uh, used vellum. I printed on vellum and then I just sewed straight through and then I just ripped it off. All right, here's my pattern. So I didn't cut anything off yet. In fact, I folded it back and taped it. Get rid of all this. I have removable tape. I was looking for this earlier and I couldn't find where. I only taped this one, I think. The other one I didn't tape. 
I think a, another cute thing to do with these pants would be to do a cutaway pocket um, and then stitch your pocket on the front. It would give like another detail. Hi, Nancy, how's it going? Did you hear me? I, I mentioned you earlier. <laughs> okay. One waistband piece, no interfacing. Like this is pretty straight up. All right, so I have my, and here's the peak and valley. So I just want my back and my front, and I'm going to cut off all the sizes that aren't the size 16 right now and get it out of the way. Now that I know that that'll work for me, I want to make these for my mom. I think they would be really cute. How's it going? That wasn't my advice, that was Libby. I know, right? The whole continuous line thing is a um, game changer. Oh yeah, Heidi, I was, or I mean, Nancy, I was saying, um, I like to, like I was, I couldn't fit my whole chat and the screen there and I wouldn't, didn't know why. And so I was, saying I like to see a tiny bit of the stream so I can tell I'm still live so I know I'm not talking to myself, you know? And I said, oh, well, I probably was the first few streams. I said, except Nancy showed up, my first viewer. Hi, Eliza, how's it going? I just felt something crawling on me, I thought. This is, this is what happens when you have long hair. You play the, is it a bug or is it a hair all day? Good thing I'm not like bug adverse, averse. Okay, let's get rid of, I'm just getting rid of all these other sizes. I might ask her if I can have a PDF version of the pattern. Okay. All right. So yeah, I cut right here, Tammy when I did the shorts. I just did that regular roll uh, cut line for them. So I'm going to taper mine down. I really want to taper them through the thigh. And so I might go down to a 12. <laughs> I feel like I could get away with that. Definitely the size 14. If I, if I grade to a size 14, that's gonna take out about I would say that that is about three quarters of an inch. Three eighths and almost three eighths. That's three quarters off the back. And then that would be five eighths off the front. Maybe I'll just go down one size. I think that would be enough. But I really wanna get to there really quickly into the thigh. You know what I mean? You are OG. <laughs> you are OG. All right, let's get a pen. And uh, my office is like so out of control right now because uh, I brought all this stuff here to, to um, put on the website and it is just like, Mm. I feel like there's stuff everywhere and I hate it. All right, so I don't want to, I, I can't, I want to keep, I really want to keep the fullness in, right about here. You know, that area there. So I'm going to try and taper pretty quickly so I can get into this right here. I know, this is the spot. I want to get right here, so that's not too bad. So let's go down to that 14. We're just going to grade. And I'm just gonna draw a line from this point at the 16 to the point here of the 14. And then I, I can just carry on, you know, with the usual 14. So same thing here. This one's a little bit of a curve. So I could use my hip curve. I think the back is straighter. 
and I will just blend that in there. Let's see if I can blend it into the hem. Oops, I'm not doing the short. Yeah, like that, right there. Yeah, just like that. So we're just gonna blend that in. <clears throat> so you see we have the 16 going down straight in there. We're just blending it in. Great. Grading between sizes is really easy. The only thing you have to really worry about is what other pieces are you affecting? With this pattern in particular, there's really very few pieces. And I think if you can stay away from the details at the bottom and kind of get all your changes before you get there, then you can just cut the size that is where you hit at this bottom here. And then you don't have to worry about making any changes to that. You know what I mean? I did, Eliza. Yeah. I sent a not so nice text to my property manager because she just never replies. And she sent someone finally. It was terrible. I hated saying it, saying things, but I was just like, dude. Yeah, so it was a lot better in here yesterday. And it was broken. The thermostat was broken and the condenser was off. So, all right, so same thing here. I'm, you know, this is the point I'm keeping up here at the top. I'm gonna zoom in. And then we're gonna get this to the size 14 right there. And then let's cut off these sizes here so we don't confuse ourselves. And this just looks plain confusing anyway. So we'll just make ourselves a nice line to remind us. There we go. All right, now let's do this side. So now the other thing to think about when you're doing this is, all right, these two seams are gonna sew together. So making sure that you're hitting this point at the same place where it's gonna sew to. This one's pretty easy, because it's pretty short. Over here on your out seam, we can look at our notches as a guide. So if I'm getting I'm grading between sizes and I'm starting here at this pocket opening here and I'm getting down into this short cut line. I can just make sure I'm doing the same on this one, get to that short cut line. And if you want, you can, you know, you can measure and check and check on the seam line. This is a pretty straightforward change. And so we're going to Start it just above this notch. I'm gonna, can I get my hip curve to work? Sometimes you just can't get your hip curve to work. Let me try this, this side. I don't like using this side of my hip curve because it's a little harder to see, but it looks like it's gonna work better. Well, not really. Maybe there we go. Let's see. I feel like that's kind of a, an angle. You can also, you know, trace it on there, right? Line up your notches and then trace the same line on there using a tracing wheel. Line up your notches. I like to put a weight down. And then let's see how we did on that first one I just did. Yeah, so we'll go by the dots here. I thought this little looked a little too round right here. All right. So now let's raise the back rise. I bet hate that though, Nancy. You shouldn't have to. You found tons of lovely things. What, did you get anything, Nancy? I just saw that part of your thing. I left jobs because they wanted me to be the squeaky wheel. They were just like, I was like, you know, I'd really like to get paid more than minimum wage since I have a degree in this and I have 10 years of experience. Um, no, no raise, no raise, no raise. I finally was like, I'm leaving. Well, why? <laughs> Well, you, you, you know, so the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I'm like, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a squeaky wheel, I'm a designer. 
<laughs> Hi, Barbara. How's it going? <laughs> and here I pay for rent. Shouldn't have to be a squeaky wheel. Telling you it's 90 degrees. Come on over. Check it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I have my back rise. A little piece of paper. I often have to make this adjustment. I often have to lengthen my uh, back rise um, and sometimes lower my front rise. And I think it's just this, this hip tilt, right? You can really see it when you see the profile of me wearing those shorts and at, at some of the pictures I took, it looked like it was winging up <laughs> a little bit. So I'm used to this. I'll, I'll just continue to use my red. All right, so I'm going to raise this an inch. <laughs> I'm going to continue this center back line here. Now, when you're doing things like this, this is, this is quite a bit. Um, you really want to maintain that you have a, a right angle here. So you can, can you see? I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. Right, Nancy? I know. We shouldn't have to be... Like, I feel like the world would just be much smoother if we were just like, oh, this is happening. Oh, okay, let's get on that. <laughs> Great, thanks, bye. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I don't know. Let's just be responsible. All right. So when you have this juncture here, you have to have a right angle. Now, if you are like, yeah, it'll be fine. All right, but here's the deal. If you, if you sew this together, let's pretend like this is our center back rise. We're looking at the back like this and we adjusted our waist an inch, right? Now we have this little point. Now when we sew it to this side, it'll go like this, right? So we have this point. Now what happens when you go to sew this is you're gonna put your waistband on and what are you gonna do? You're gonna shave off that point and you just lost a quarter inch, 25% of the length that you just added. So make sure that you have your right angle before you go there. Otherwise, you're, you're kind of doing yourself a, a disservice, you know. So I don't have a right angle quite yet, but we're going to lay the front on here. And we need our pocket on here as well. So let's just lay this on. We're going to line it up. This is how you know you have your whole waistline and your whole side seam here is when you have your pocket piece here. So let's line it up. I'm putting it on the notch, just like that. And I'm just gonna use oy, this removable tape. Yes, I use a lot of tape. All right, so now we have our whole front, right? And then we can, it's a 5 8 inch seam allowance, so let's overlap these so that they're sewn together just like that, okay? So now that's our waistline, right? We have our nice smooth transition. Make sure that none of this stuff shifts. So I might need to add a piece of paper to here and um, to at least this piece. I could use this piece for that. But you should have separate pieces of paper. Let's check it out. So if I want to get this inch in here, I also need my one inch, I mean my right angle. Let's go a little bit away and then we'll start just, let's just start, I'm gonna use a pencil at first so I don't have too much red. Let's just start trying to blend this into the center front. That inch is a lot. Can you like you can't just go to the side seam. <laughs> You'll have a really weird point. You're going to have to go when you're doing it this much, you're going to have to go all the way to the center front. Oh, it's not working for you? PDF 20? Ooh. I don't know what to do about that. I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit. Um I wonder 
if she, she said it was good last night at midnight tonight. Midnight. Is that too far away? Is that okay, you guys? That's weird. I'm sorry. I'll reach out to her after the stream, Tammy, and I'll let you know, okay? I'm trying to think of a good way so you guys, uh, when I'm done streaming, I will let her know. So if you guys are interested and it'll, it'll be good through the 15th. So hopefully it'll be fixed and um, by Saturday when I stream again and I'll let you know for sure. If you want to catch up to me though, I'll definitely reach out to her today and she's very, very responsive. I like that about her. Oh, and I should tell you guys tomorrow I'm going to be interviewed by um, Oyen from Lush Cloth. And I talked a little bit about this in my um, surprise stream yesterday. It's a really casual thing. I have no ID, idea like what to expect. I'm a little nervous. Um, and it's on Instagram. So I've never done that before. So you can watch me be really nervous if you want. Um, so if you have a question though, you can submit it to her and it'd be nice to see some familiar faces. <laughs> so anyway, that's tomorrow. And her account is Lush Cloth on Instagram. <laughs> okay, so, all right, so here we go. We have this right angle, continue on here. So we obviously need to add to this piece and to this piece here, and then we'll need to add to our other pocket piece uh, as well to this right here. So let's do that. All right, let's just add some paper to those. It's nice we already have it sitting here, right? And then once I do this, I think that's all the changes. I Because I wanted to decrease the volume in the thigh and raise the center back waist. So yeah, I think that'll be everything and we can start cutting out. All right, so let's get this on here. We'll use permanent tape for this. We don't want this to come off. And a little piece for this pocket here. Do them all separate. You'll regret it if you don't. You'll be it's just kind of a, like a puzzle if you don't. All right, so now we have all these here and let's get rid of some of that. Let's see if I can see my line. All right. Now you could just use your rotary knife, very unconventional, but why not? Get a nice smooth line, just blend it in with your waist. We'll copy that, the pocket, to our other pocket. And then now we just need to blend in with our side seams here. So because we're not really alterating, altering, al alterating, altering the pocket opening very much. We'll just leave it like that. We don't need to shift our pocket up or anything like that. We're not doing anything like that. We're just raising this waistline. So we could use the rotary knife for this as well. Oh, and this is another thing. Like if you're really gonna significantly raise your waistline, what's happening is it's narrowing as it gets higher and higher. And so you have to be really careful that you're not changing that um, amount in a way that won't go over your hips. I talked about this in the beginning. So if you don't like this lower waist style, having the pants pull on as a stretch woven, um, they kind of need to be at least just above your hip area, like your high hip, because they can't narrow down so much into the narrower part of your waist. Otherwise you're not going to be able to pull these pants on because stretch woven can't stretch as much as say a knit or um, something that has an opening like a zipper fly, right? I think these pants would be really cute with a zipper fly though, but I love the smooth look. 
and you're really not change. I'm not really changing this amount significantly. And since it is a stretch, I'm not too worried about it with the waistband. That'll be fine. She even says in the instructions, your waistband might be a little bigger or smaller and that's okay. It's all going to work out. All right. So let's get these two pieces sorted. Yeah, that'll be fine. That felt weird, and I see why now. Okay. It's a little piece of tape, like, not stuck. I always like to tape down my pieces right here, too. Uh, sometimes you're really skint on the uh, paper, and what'll happen is it'll peel off. <laughs> You'll lose it. Or it'll get it'll get caught. Like look look at this. See that? That's why you tape it. Perfect example. Not a big fan of cutting my patterns with the rotary knife because this is not as accurate. You know, you you might push against your ruler a little bit, and um, then it's kind of like moving <laughs> all over the place. Okay, so let's look at our other pocket piece here. This one, right, it goes here. It needs this little wing. I'm going really fast, so just tell me if you need have questions or if you have other um, fit um, things that you want to work on with this pant. Like if you want it, you could re you could do the grading the other way. Like say your um, waist is bigger than your hip and you want a larger waist than you want your hip to be. You can do the same grading as I did. That's totally possible. You're not, you don't have very much space in there because we're talking about kind of a high hip, low waist point where the wa the waistband sits rather than it being um, going all the way up, you know, up higher. I mean, my waist is getting higher and higher. I don't know about you guys, but it's getting higher and higher. So if, um, what was that? That was a little piece of tape. Um, if you need to taper the other way, like you want to bring it out here, just make sure, like you saw, tape this piece on here, the pocket, which is your pocket facing, I think it's called. It says front pocket. Oh, this is called the pocket facing. All right. So typically what you would have is you would have uh, like three pattern pieces. You would have a pocket facing on top of the pocket lining and you have the bottom pocket bag, top pocket bag. And this one simplifies it even more. And it also reduces the bulk that's going to be through this midsection here by just having two pieces. So it also means that this has to be in self or contrast. Um, and because you're going to see this spot of your pocket. So make sure that it's something that you want to do. So if it's really heavy denim, that stretch, you're, you are going to be adding that. So yeah, so if you want to do the reverse of your grading, say you want the waist to be bigger than the hip, you can do the same thing just like I did here by um, uh, blending between the grades. <laughs> Good thing of the word. <laughs> blending between the grades, but remember, this right here on the body is, it's like, it's like where my underwear sit, my underwear are pretty high waisted and, um, and your hip, you really don't have much distance here. So you're talking about the pants, like falling from this fullest point here, kind of straight down. They're very, uh, straight kind of full leg, um, cropped style pants. All right, let me just add that little bit to this little piece here. Line up all these edges here. And I'm just gonna cut it the same. Ooh, I kind of did that kind of badly. Let's see. I'm so nervous sometimes using a rotary knife. Uh, 
And let's make sure. Yeah, that's just straight. All right. That's another good reason to tape back there. All right, now we have all of our pattern pieces ready to go. Do the big cleanup here. I kind of want to do a rounded pocket. What do you guys think? Like, I like the patch pocket though. It looks really cute. And a couple of folks have done rivets. I'm definitely gonna add rivets to these. It looks really cute. I, I like the, the look of it, you know, like it's kind of dark, but don't you think rounded pockets could be kind of cute? I don't know, maybe rounded pockets. I don't know, maybe the angles are better because of the peaks and valleys, you know? Like the, the angles are kind of in line with the triangles. All right, this is contrast fabric. We'll set that aside. Um, I'm gonna do my pocket facing and contrast fabric, which is the one that's not gonna be seen, the one that's on the, be on the back of my hand. And then I'm gonna match my pocket that you can see from the outside to the pant. I don't want contrast there, especially because my contrast, even if it, even though it is stretch, is very lightweight. I did buy more fabric to make a pair of another pair of these, and that'll probably be arriving in the next couple of days. And I got, um, I got something. I got a navy blue fabric. Was it a twill stretch twill? I got it from Hearts Fabric. Uh, for the body, but for the contrast, I got a non-stretch because I don't think you really need it for that peak and valley. All right. And just note, this piece right here is on the fold, this waistband piece, and it's, it's a pretty big uh, smile, and you need two of them. Let's get rid of the extra sizes. Those, those uh, peaks are really big. I really hope I can get a top out of it. Oh, you did? Which, where, did you get it from like way back? I wanna hear all about it because I'm, I'm kind of ready to have something that puts on snaps. <laughs> what will it do, Terry? Like, meaning, like, will it only do rivets or will it do, um, I did, I did wash this, right? I remember washing it. I better have washed this. <laughs> I'm having doubts right now. I washed the yellow one. Imagine I didn't wash these. Let's not imagine that. Yeah, will your will it do rivets, snaps? Like what will it um can you just get different attachments and hardware? Yeah, right, Hannah? Okay. Got my salvages lined up. Oh, what happened to the camera? What happened to the camera? Uh, hello?
What the heck? That was really weird. Now I know none of you are watching. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> There we go. Does everything else look okay? That's never happened. I mean, not since like our first year. And then we learned that was something else. You Oh, from Gold Star. I forgot about uh, Gold Star. Okay. Oh, that sounds great, Gary. I wish we were neighbors and we could share things like that, you know, like a little sewing co-op. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really still. Just so you know, Nancy, I'm never still. <laughs> you were typing when I fixed it. <laughs> that was crazy. I'm glad I noticed. You didn't miss anything because I was just folding my fabric. All right, this isn't a one-way fabric, so maybe, and it's very wide, right? Maybe. Look at that. That's pretty nifty. Oh, so bright. This chat is full of enablers. That is so true. But I've learned so much from these folks, you know? <laughs> They've given me such great ideas. I wasn't in the home sewing world, so I appreciate all the enabling. All right, so I'm gonna put that over there and then um, cut it in a second. <laughs> right, Terry? <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to measure this to the fold since the grain line's so far over. I'll, although I could just do that. I could just move the grain line a little bit. That way it's more in the middle, you know? If you ever need to move your grain line, just, just make a parallel. If you don't have one, it's perpendicular to the hem. If you can't see the hem, you're gonna have to tape your pattern pieces together like this one. Did I just do randomly three and three quarters inches? That's interesting. Wow. Okay. That doesn't still get me all the way to the selvage though. So let's move this over. Let's give myself a little room over there to adjust. Oh yeah, it might need to go like this. Yeah, let's just give myself a little room over there. All right. Definitely don't want to monkey around with the stretch being off. It was really hard to see on my shorts where the grain line was uh, because I was using scraps and it's a twill weave, you know? Twill weaves are pretty tough. Oh, let me uh, zoom it out for you guys too. I have a hair in my dress and it's really bugging me. Oh, is it not zoomed in anymore? Oh, okay. <laughs> I never, you know, I'm glancing at chat and trying to, to like soak it in in a, a second. It's only when something doesn't make sense that I'm like, wait. Oh, that's cool, Nancy. I love how all of you have this. All right, very close to the edge of my fabric here. Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Are you now, Terry? <laughs> That's funny. You're in business, but you're doing it for free. <laughs> Do you at least work for like cookies or massages or dish doing? I don't know. What's your currency? <laughs> What's your love language? <laughs> This is a little awkward. All right. Let's do some notches. I think we don't really need some of these, but we'll just put them in. We'll do the size 16 notches above where I adjusted. I don't need that one. Um, I don't need that one. Um, I'm not sure what these are for. I think that these, I'm kind of curious, what are those for? I wonder why they're not notches. Huh. Well, we could always, um, oh, I'm going to get my new soapstone thingy. I love this thing now. I got one of those little soap stone. I love how hard this is. Love it. All right, so we'll do the, this one here. And this one here. And then let's do the pockets. <laughs> oh, that that's cool, Terry. I like that. Acts of service. Yeah, <laughs> right, Nicole. <laughs> You've read that book too. <laughs> yeah, you're in the shorts. Cardinals. Ba oh, oh. Well, that's cool. The button fly. I like the button fly. That one's kind of fun. <laughs> I think what's interesting about doing the button fly is that um, you're kind of forced to do part of the work of the fly. So it's not as painful at the end. So you have to do your buttonholes. And then when you're at the end, you're like, all I have to do is put my buttons on, you know? I'm just like poking through the paper here. I'm kind of savage with my patterns, aren't I? All right, there we go. <clears throat> and then I'll use pins for the other side. I don't have pins, oh yeah, I do, okay. I ordered more magic pins, you guys. <laughs> I have a sickness. Yeah, this pin, it, it's not really a pin, it's soapstone. I'm not sure how it works. Like, I think that the, you unscrew this and you just pull it out further. It can break, so you gotta be careful. But I really love how hard it is so that I feel like it stays at a point and I think that you um, can sharpen it with like a knife or something. All right, our backs are cut. Let's do our fronts. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry.
Get that away, make sure. It looks like they cut on the grain, which is really nice. I want one of you to do me a favor and um, <laughs> I want you to do my dirty work. Uh, I want you to um, tell Closet Core Patterns that um, uh, it would be really awesome in their new fabric store if they cut fabric on the grain. <laughs> I'm gonna get this a little closer to the side here. I'm too chicken to do it myself. It's so funny because my friend last night, we were in this game. I'll tell you a Fortnite story just because it's funny, I know, to most people that I play Fortnite. So I was playing with my girlfriend in Fortnite. She doesn't really like it, but this new season's actually kind of fun and kind of goofy. And there, there was an update this week. Even I was just like, what is this gun? And it picked up a big boulder and threw it, like it picked up a tractor. It's just hilarious. Anyway, so we're playing this game. We both land at this location. And she's like, Sammy, Sammy, there's, there's a guy. He's, he's acting weird though. And I was like, he's acting weird. She goes, yeah, we just landed so we didn't have like uh, weapons or anything like that, right? No, it's not the chalk, it's soapstone, Nancy. Thank you, Dar. You're right, Barbara? Mine is soapstone. I would never draw anything with it. Um, so we land at this location. She's like, he's acting weird. And she goes, oh, he went that way. I don't think he has a weapon. That's why he's acting like that. And I was like, oh, and I was like, where is he? And I saw him kind of like hiding like this <laughs> behind things like he would not protect you. And I was like, oh, that's really funny. And so, um, this is probably going to make you guys think I'm a savage, too. Oh, Heidi, thank you. It's nice of you. Um, so he started, like, emoting. You can emote in the game and dance. If you know anything about Fortnite, you know that dances are a really big part of it, and it's kind of goofy. And so we were dancing with him. But you can't ever trust anybody for doing that because they'll do that, and then they'll shoot you, you know? So you have to be really careful. You, they can pretend like they don't have a weapon. And so she was like... You get rid of him, Sammy. You're the bad guy. I was like, what? <laughs> this is my friend that I actually am like, you know, I'm always like, no, we, this person's being racist. We got to get rid of them or bounce them out of the party or whatever, you know. She's like, you're so mean. I'm like, no, I'm honest, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. I love that. And you got your little alert. These, these little stickers you guys are getting are really cute. So, um... So anyway, like a minute later, weirdly, I get a friend request from someone in the game, which is really, really kind of not common. And I was like, is that the, is that the person that we just were encountering? She goes, I think so. I ignored it. I'm like, we're playing the game. I ignored it. She added him. And then he joined our lobby so we could tell back in the lobby, like in the game before you enter it, he's waiting there. We're, I'm assuming it's a guy, sorry. And um, so then we get back to the lobby. I have still not added him. And, and she was like, she's like, oh, let me go see if it's a little kid. Because that's one of the rules. You have to see if it's a little kid. Because I'm fine with playing little kids occasionally, but most of the time, no. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's just not my time to babysit other people's kids. <laughs> and so um, she comes back from game chat. She's like, it's a little kid. She goes, I'm going to delete and block him, but you have to kick him out of the lobby. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Now I know I'm kicking out a little kid and I feel terrible, but I'm not going to invite him to our game because I'm not going to babysit someone's kid, you know? So it was crazy. So you guys got to do me a salt. Maybe I should have her email Closet Core and say, hey, my friend who I, I have no idea anything about sewing, but would you please cut your fabric on the grain because they are claiming they're going to be doing sustainable fabric and their whole thing is sustainability, environmental stuff, and cutting on the grain is the first step, right? Right? Anyway, that's my spiel today. That's my thing. I would really love it if someone would be like, I'm really sick and tired of hearing you talk about cutting on the grain. I would love to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that person. All right. I don't know what these markings are, but we'll just continue them. This one is an asterisk. This one's a bow tie. Um, we'll put this one here. I 
am very suspicious I pre-washed this. I remember doing it. I remember doing the yellow for sure because I remember being a little crunched for time when I did it. Bow tie, asterisk, all right. Yes, cut on the grain. Yeah, I don't think they like me, so I don't want to email them. <laughs> so, I don't know why they wouldn't like me, but I just, it's just my anxiety, you know. I'm a weirdo too. <laughs> but I would be like, oh, cutting on the grain, huh? I just my order. All right, so let's see what I can do with this little piece here. I do have um, my pockets. I have my back pockets. I can't fit my waistband, obviously. And this one's gonna be in my contrast. These are contrast right here. Dang, I'm already, I can make two pairs of these with the amount of fabric I have, I feel like. I'm gonna put that there. Actually, I should use the piece that takes up the most if I can't cut them both. If you're uh, cutting a fabric that has like a pattern, like a stripe or any kind of pattern, maybe even a cute print or something like that, you might wanna think about this ahead if you are using your pocket and cutting the same fabric as the body, cause you might want it to match. And so what you can do is you can see right here, here's the line where the little opening is. So your pants are gonna sit right here. This is the exposed part. So you could do something fun where you do something you know, uh, perpendicular to it, as long as your stretch allows for this. Or you could um, match up the print. So if you have a little elephant head, you can continue the elephant head there. I don't know, Ray, I have no idea. Hi, Libby, how's it going? That's what I was thinking, Dar. You've been running around with the phone hand, dinner's in the cockpit. Ooh. <laughs> right, right, Anna, I know. Hi, Nancy, how's it going? Oh, you know, someone else said the same thing, Nancy. I'm gonna reach out to her. I'll bet it was something like she said, it starts at midnight and she maybe she put 12 p.m. instead of 12 a.m., you know what I mean? Because I've totally done that before. Um, and sometimes our websites are on a different time zone than us. So she's really responsive, and so hopefully, hopefully I can get that code to work for you by Saturday. I'm really sorry. I, I didn't, like, I didn't know how I would test it out, but. Uh, I don't really want any of these. This is a lot of notches, and I just don't really feel like I, I need them at all. So I'm just going to skip those. Okay, I've got my pockets. All right, so we just have these two in our self which is the waistband we need two of and two pockets. So let's see where we're at here. Well, this actually might be kind of a good piece because look, we can put our piece on the fold right here and it'll curve up into that area there. And we can put our pockets right there. Sometimes I really kick myself for waiting till the end to cut out the waistband because I feel like the waistband ends up taking up so much room. Yeah, that, that used to be the standard Malin, but probably 30 years ago. Cause I've heard plenty of customers say that. Why is it so dark? I literally have a light right here. <laughs> it's like fabric sucks up the light and paper reflects it. Gee. That's a little better. <laughs> right, Malin? I know, exactly. That's why I'm like, ah, it could be just something simple like that. All right. 
Yeah, I had some, I had this weird shipping thing on my website yesterday, and then I had another one this morning, and someone wanted to order something from Sweden, and they were like, it won't work. And I don't know why, but I have it set up to where any, it'll, it'll calculate shipping for any region. And then other regions I have specific profiles, like all the regions in Cal, uh, the United States, because shipping here is different than shipping internationally. And, um... I had to set up a specific profile for Sweden. I was like, geez. And the second I did, her order went through. So it must have been trying to. It was really weird. I feel like most of running a website is outsmarting it. This is something I refer to as the, someone taught me a long time ago called the 2% rule. You need to be 2% smarter than the thing you're trying to figure out, you know? You guys shorted eight inches on fabric? Man. Hi, Beverly. Oh, interesting. Right, sometimes the old, better, the best um, marking things are the old ones. I want this. This is ancient. It's cr a crayon, a marking crayon. I want this. This is the last of it. I can't find it. I haven't, I haven't Googled the world, but like, um, Sailorite didn't have it. Waywag didn't have it. I'm trying to make sure I got all the, oh, that's a, that is, wow, Hannah. The 2% rule. Yeah, see, I told you. 2%, <laughs> you just gotta be 2% smarter. That's all. And sometimes, most days, I am just... I just don't have that 2% tumbling. All right, I'm gonna nip the center front here on the fold. I'm just nipping it. You have a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Oh, Ray, thank you. Ray, you already donated yesterday twice. And it was just a like, a just chatting stream. Uh, I'm not going to do this one right here. I don't feel like the center back or this one is necessary for me, but there are some notches there. I'm going to cut one more. I'm, I'm really picky about cutting waistbands because it's really easy to get them a little bit off when it's you have this really narrow spot to line up on the fold here. You could just barely get this off and like that much and you know you're definitely angling it out which makes this side smaller and this side bigger. So you, you gotta make sure you're getting that. Well, look at that. Maybe mine are different. I can't believe, you, yeah, a no waste dress. And so now you have a, a dress you can't make so you just wasted all the fabric on your no waste dress i mean i know it's not a waste you could probably use it for another project but that kind of hurts that one i honestly don't want to request it also of them or suggest it because i'm afraid of the response <laughs> Are you trying to tell us something, Malin? <laughs> no, but I have heard the um, adage of when you're like, I've been on a few boards, like I was uh, like a, the board of a preschool. I was on the Chamber of Commerce board, you know, like in a couple of others. And someone once said, 2% of the people do 98% of the work. <laughs> and when they said that, that was exactly what I needed to hear to make me stop signing up to help. Isn't that terrible? But I was like, you know what? They're right. If people want it, I'm busy. I'm heck busy. I was had a business. I had a child, a small child, and uh, we had an orchard. We had um, hundreds of chickens. I was like, when these people would be like, oh, I'm just too busy. I'm like, mm-mm, I'm sorry. You aren't busy enough, some of you. I know. <laughs> And, and, but it also made me start going, you know what? That's okay. That's their choice, right? So they really can't complain about what's happening here. 
and maybe I'll just be part of that. I'm not gonna complain either and I'll help out when I can and I'm not gonna drive myself crazy anymore. But once someone said that, I was like, oh, that is so true. All right, so now I have all my pieces cut. I can make a pair of shorts. Maybe I will. You know what else I learned about being on a board? You probably never think this, but being the president, lots less work than all the other positions. And I'm sure that not, that's not true on every board, but it was on every board I was on because the president delegates things to other people and you think, oh, I'll be so, oh wait, I don't want to cut here. I'll, it'll be so much less work if I'm just like the secretary. All I have to do is write the minutes. Trust me. When I was finally president, I was like, whoa, this is so much easier. If you're not good at decision making, I don't recommend it. If you're not also not good at being the person on the front line. While I have a lot of anxiety, I didn't mind that so much because it was such a small thing, small chamber <laughs> for a small town. And I worked at City Hall, <laughs> so I knew people. So, Right, Heidi? <laughs> Right, Beverly? That is so true. God, that is so true. All right, here's my back pockets. All right, let's cut the fun fabric now. So this is quite a bit lighter in weight, and I, I thought about it like maybe I should double it up. Maybe I should um, fuse it. And I just decided I'm going to leave it because I'm kind of curious to see how it reacts. Yeah, and you know what the thing is? I hated that sometimes I would get resentful of the people that weren't doing as much. And I thought that's, oh sorry, that's not where, what I need to be doing is none of my business. They can be as busy or not busy as they want. This is about me. And that's when I realized that I needed to cut back because if I was feeling that way, it was kind of bringing out the worst in me. They didn't have to help out if they don't want. That's on them, you know? This is a directional fabric, so I obviously have to um, cut it with the direction. Oof, it's so frustrating though, isn't it? Don't you want to just go like that? <laughs> or <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah, it's a one-way print, Barbara. Okay, so maybe I can get my pockets though right there. That's the happy dance, all right. Makes you feel better about that, right? If you're OCD, just don't look. Or pick a two-way print. Honestly, pick a two-way print. <laughs> All right, so remember the bottom part of my pants are the size 14, so that's the size I'm gonna cut out. And I'm, all, I'm gonna get this a little closer over here. There's more stretch on this poplin than the um, ripstop too. I wonder, this is drafted for, I think someone who's uh, five six. So it might be a little long on me. Uh, so there is a length and a shortened line right here. That's the size 26. Wait, shoot. I shifted it over and then I ended up cutting it on the wrong size. Don't 
don't start doing that. Okay, so here's this bow tie again and the asterisk. I'm very curious about this. So I'm just going to leave this on here. I actually just think it's just a guide so that you don't get your fronts and your back peaks or valleys, however you want to look at these, um, reversed. I think it'll be pretty easy to make sure you don't though because these are, this one's going to be much narrower, the front. But you wouldn't want to start sewing it and then stretch it because it's a on the bias here. And then be like, why can I, why is this one so hard, you know, to sew? What, Libby? Are you serious? Wow. Yeah, my, I should have told you about my mom's repair saga, Ray, because my mom's repair, uh, fridge which is basically two years old or a year old when did they get their house uh two years two years old it um died they've been without a fridge since bef i think before mother's day <laughs> and they keep saying oh this or that or whatever oh it's gonna take this long to get the part you know covid's delayed things understandably and then finally someone came and they were like oh this has already been assessed well i'm just here to assess it i wasn't here to do the repair and then during this time her washing machine broke too so she has no fridge and no washing machine and nobody's being very helpful the washing machine's getting um has a much more responsive uh person on it thankfully <laughs> So I finally gave her my old mini fridge. She's like, well, we have the one in the, um, they have like an old one in the garage, the one that came with their house. Um, but it was already had some stuff in it. So I was like, here, just put this one in your house. So you have like a little bit of a few things, you know, like your milk and stuff. Oh, I almost cut that off. I didn't cut that off with my other, my pocket, did I? Let's check. No, I didn't. Okay. I was worried I cut off that extra that I added there. All right. Sometimes your additions like that, like for me, they look too much like waste pa paper on there, you know? I'm really being diligent about my fabric scraps lately about what's natural fiber, making sure only natural fiber goes into my bin because of my mulch mats I'm gonna make that I'm so excited about. Oh, I hate that, Libby. I hate it when they don't acknowledge when we got a sleep number bed, I have to say those repair guys were some of the rudest repair guys I have ever encountered. And I am like, do you guys want any water? And the restroom's over here. These people were in my bedroom and they're being rude to me. And I was just like, I just want you out of here right now. You know, like I hated it. And, and our salesperson for that bed was so nice. It was such a like agonizing thing. Like, oh, do we want to spend this much? But <clears throat> we did, and we really liked the salesperson. I was like really torn whether to tell her. Like, you know, the sales, the delivery guys are like pretty terrible. It was like they were like judgmental of us for buying it. <laughs> I was like, isn't this your only gig? Like, don't you just work for them? It was really weird. Size 14, size 14, size 14. There we go. My hand wanted to go to the blue line. Do, 
Um, here it is. There's a couple black lines, so I have to make sure I'm doing the first one. There we go. Are you, Terry? I liked ours. Um, hi, Miss Fringe. How's it going? Long time lurker, first time chatter. I love that. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, that's good. It was in two sealed crates. <laughs> what did you say in the light for? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, uh, the mulch mats. Okay, so, you know, I live somewhere pretty dry that needs, you know, we have a drought going on here. So, my idea for fabric scraps, I've had this idea for a solid 12 years. I know since our house in Humboldt County. And my idea is that I want to make, and I got this, I got some cheesecloth. So I want to make like basically like quilts out of cheesecloth filled with my natural fiber scraps. And I want to just basically use them as mulch in the garden. And I don't want, because for years I was like, I don't want to just sprinkle all my fabric scraps out there because basically they could blow away, they could, um, you know, just get caught in things or whatever, right? And so I thought, I've been thinking about this for so long and lately I've been revisiting the idea of it. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use cheesecloth. So yes, I did have to buy something, um, but I feel like this would, decompose and I could still water through this it's porous and then yeah I'm going to fill it with you know scraps and you guys are all going to be like but those scraps are so cute you know and then that'll be out in the garden around like little bushes that need extra watering um you know stuff like that and I'll probably take my scraps too and, and take I'm actually going to use my old blades and I'm gonna just kind of cut them up a little bit more, you know? I'll do a better job of it. And then put them in there so that they have a kind of a head start. This is my idea for truly using waste scraps. And then I'll put these in my mulch mat. <laughs> so. Do I drape very often? I don't, I have a little bit. I don't because most people don't have a dress form. It is really fun though, very nice. Um, you know, Donna, uh, Beatrice, the folks that made my dress form, they have this community that you can be a part of even if you don't have a dress form. Um, I don't know how you find out more information about it, but I think you could just go to the Beatrice website and probably find out. And they have weekly draping sessions with uh, Gabby, Lady Grift, stuff like that. That might be something you could be interested in. You don't have to have a Beatrice dress form. You don't even have to have, you can do whatever you want. You don't even have to have a dress form. You can just be a part of the community. It may cost, I don't remember. I don't know, I'm kind of grandfathered in because uh, they started it but way before, way before. Uh, where's my other, oh, it's right here. Yeah, against weeds, exactly. So it's going to help prevent weeds from growing, keep them, hold the moisture in the ground. Um, yeah, all right, so here's, Here's my pants. What do we think? Are these, these are kind of flamboyant. Are we thinking these are kind of flamboyant? <laughs> it looks like my legs are on fire. <laughs> what do you guys think? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh.
Look at that. That's why you need those. I think that, yeah, there we go. Wait, is this it? Oh yeah, look at that. I had already, I have already, had already confused them. So no wonder there are these marks. You could literally probably go like this, take the front and put it on like this by accident. <laughs> You'd know, but y you know. You think so, you guys? Oh, I hope so. This is the inseam. So the outseam would look, um, let's do a little mock-up of the outseam. Uh, oh, I know how I'll do it. I was making this really complicated. All right. So from my, my side seam will look like this. <laughs> Peaks and valleys. I, my table is just not big enough. <laughs> Someday I'm going to ask you guys uh, if I'm allowed to get a bigger office. Yeah, what do you think? I think too, like if you could see how much brighter the fabric is. Did you look at the hashtag, Malin? You guys wanna look at the hashtag together? I love doing that. Did you, Heidi? That's awesome. Awesome, Malin. Okay, let's check out the um, hashtag. Maybe they're even on the, like, it's linked on the website. Um, I don't see it. Oh yeah, here, here's the um, hashtag though. It's just not linked. Copy, I'm gonna show you guys just a second. Okay, go, I want you to, how do I say enter? Okay, fine, I'll get that. Oh, I know why. You'd think I'd have this bookmarked by now, wouldn't you? All right, uh, let's see. I didn't check my microphone. You can't see me either. I'm over here. <laughs> I really would like you to go enter. All right. I'll look at the chat too. Here we go. Yeah, so can we just scroll through? I think so. Look, these are so cute. Look at how kind of slouchy they are. Do I think the Minerva influencer thing? What's the, do you mean the ambassador program, Hannah? Oh wait, this is all, okay, so let's, oh no, that was, okay, so these are cute too, look at that. Those are cute. Is that what you mean, Hannah? I know, Nicole, 9.77, and I hope in the next few weeks we can hit 10K before my anniversary. There's the little like, um, valley there's the peak those are really cute on her these are really cute look at the rivets see the rivets up there those are really cute and look at the, the contrast I think this pair is really cute it would not be my color way of choice but I really like the way these fit they look like a little canvas pant look at her little shoes yeah and this chambray pair so I just got accepted to that, Hannah, and um, you, I can tell you about it. Well, let me just go through these. Look at, she used that poppy print that we all love. Uh, 
Oh, she made the shorts. Nice. Gingham. Oh, those are cute. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I haven't ran a 10K in a while. All right, that's all of them. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> so regarding the Minerva thing, um, I just got accepted to that this summer and I just placed my first order. So I'll tell you that um, you get a discount to the website. That's about 10%. And if you're in their, their craft club thing, um, you get to double down on that. So whatever that is, you get to add your 10% to. Um, for the, and then what they do is they give you a list. These are all the fabrics you have to pick from. Um, and then you can say, yeah, I would like to do this. And this is how many yards. And as long as not too many people picked it, they'll send it to you. So I gave them three choices. I finally sat there and looked through them all. There were a lot of, of it was a big variety of fabrics and I will be really honest with you a lot of them weren't my style but it was mostly because they would hate my cameras here and I'm always picking things that will look good on camera so a lot of them were really cool like polyester knits with a cool print or whatever um, lots of great um, lots of great novelty type fat not novelty fabrics as in um, like juvenile but as in like um, things you wouldn't necessarily sew with every day like sequins and lace and things like that which is really awesome um i found of uh, some i found lots of good choices and really i just couldn't pick a lot of them like i said because they don't work with my cameras so I ended up picking fabric, some two canvases because I want to use it for my laundry basket pattern, which I keep talking about. And I've been really, it's probably the source, source of my stress is the stupid laundry basket pattern. And I, I bet nobody cares about this pattern, but I'm one of those people that when I have to want to do something, I have to go through and finish it. And it's just like, I'm so overwhelmed with things like that right now. So, um, and then I put in for another thing and I wanted to make matching pajamas out of it. And they said I couldn't have that one. So probably other people had grabbed it. I don't know, but it's very easy to do. Um, you have a lot of time. You have to sew the fabric within, I think three months of getting it and then just post it on the Minerva website. And you, there's like certain parameters and post it on social media. I think it doesn't matter how many followers you have. Uh, they really like you to be interactive on their community. I'm trying to be better about that. Um, and if anyone wants to, I don't know, are we friends on Minerva? But if anyone wants to, I'm on there. Uh, what else? Um, I was going to say one other thing. Oh, and you just need to do one project a year. But you do get to keep your fabric and you get to keep your project and all that. And if you use things like uh, a, a pattern that they carry, you can link it on there and everything. So, no, we're not, Ray. That's a hard pass. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. How's it going? <laughs> yuck, yuck. I will be starting to run more, Liza. We're going to get a treadmill, I think. I think that's the only regret about where I live is that I can't go on a run unless I want to go up and down the, the drive <laughs> bunch. Um, okay, well, here's the thing, Nancy. You can only, as a Minerva, yeah, they have, that site has so much. Um, it, it's pretty, pretty deep as far as um, selection goes. And their shipping is apparently really good and really fast and affordable. So like I said, I just ordered my first thing. So I ordered something and paid for it. I got a pattern on there, which now I don't have the fabric too, which is kind of a bummer because I would have probably not picked this pattern. Um, but I wanted them to arrive at the same time. Um, and then, uh, and then the fabric I ordered through the ambassador program. So every month they're going to say, Hey, all right, ambassadors, here's a list to all of the fabrics. And it's a lot, a lot of fabrics. It is not like 20 fabrics and you're vying with a hundred people for it. It is a lot of fabrics. So, so I don't know, Hannah, it's up to you if, if it's worth it or not. I don't know if they're looking for ambassadors, but definitely apply if you're interested. I will say if you do, 
Like I saw a lot of people saying, oh, I wanna do this. I need to start posting on here. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I would actually post on there and then say, I'd love to, <laughs> you know, because I don't think a lot of those folks realize that what they're looking for is what are your posts gonna look like and are you actually going to post because that's what they're looking for. And it's free fabric, so they can, they have every right to have some parameters, so. Um, it didn't seem like it, Elena. They could, I don't know, I'm new to it. Yeah, so yeah, you'll see, I'll have my first project soon. And I, I definitely, I'm like easing into it because it's, it's a little more work to search for fabric on there because then I have to go, all right, do I think those two go together? And what if I don't get both? And is this a knit? Like I was searching all the knits because I want to do more knitwear on here. Um, and so I'm trying to get in the swing of it and um, I'll probably do it more regular than some Minerva folks do because it's free fabric for us and that helps me out a lot. I think I only make about $650 a month with Patreon. So my budget is pretty tight with my rent, my internet and my fabric. So the Minerva thing is awesome. What I really love about it is there's no strings attached. I can make whatever I want. <laughs> I don't even have to use one of their patterns, which I love. It's a very generous, it's a very generous program. And what they do is they're like, these are the fa fabrics we have on sale this month. We'd really like to promote these, you know, so. And then they link to you. Like they'll say, hey, this person's done it. So what is really cool is that when you're shopping for fabrics on there, you can look at all the, like anything, if you're shopping for anything, you can look at every project that's been linked to it, which is kind of neat. You can go, oh, that fabric photographed really differently. I see now what color that really is. So that is really nice. I really love all that cross-referencing. Yeah, so anyway. All right, what do we think? <laughs> I think this will be fun. <laughs> All right, well, um, I hopefully, if you wanna sew with me, maybe you can get the pattern printed and cut out by Saturday. It's gonna be a pretty quick sew. Uh, it's a clean finished waist, and I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna sew it that way. I think it would be really helpful to her if I did, because, um, you know, it's a waistband. You don't have to sew it that way. You can sew it the way I did on my jean shorts, where I just put the waistband together and surged it on. See that? I understitched it too. Oh, look at those quail. Libby gave me the idea that I need watermelon pockets next. So maybe I, do you think I should stitch? Maybe I'll stitch the leaf. I think I'm gonna stitch the leaf on the back pocket. I think that's what I'll do. Libby, are you still here? Did you see, I, I printed this on vellum and it was so much easier to just tear apart. Yeah, thanks, Elena. I'm really glad, like, they had a, they were looking for video folks, too, and I started to apply for that, and I just felt like, I don't know if I'm a really good fit for most people. I already have so much going on here, I'm not sure. People say they want you to do video for them, and then they have a lot of rules. They don't say that at first, and then they say, oh, but we need you to do this, 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 and this. They, they have their own, but they were paying. And um, other people do that and they're not paying. And I'm like, well, I'm doing this for free. I'm not going to, I have, I have plenty to do. I don't need you. <laughs> You're not giving me anything though. Yeah, so Libby, do you have vellum? You might try it on this sometime. It's, I can send you a few pages. I got like a box of 30 pages. Yeah, right? I have this left over from a quilt that I did. So. Yeah, I just printed it. I lucked out with the sizes um, because I wasn't sure. Oh, I wanna take a picture of this. Yeah. What else did I need to tell you? Okay, so tomorrow, like I said, I'm being interviewed by that gal, Oyen, from Lush Cloth. So if you wanna come, it's on Instagram, not here, but on Instagram at, oh, are there any people in the UK when someone says 8 p.m. UK time, that is, there's only one 8 p.m. UK time, right? There's, you don't have to, more than one time zone, right? I was making sure because I feel like I've been an hour off before. 
So I want to make sure I get this right. I want to be late or, or something. So I think that's noon my time. <laughs> anyway, let me know. <laughs> Otherwise, you can come to my interview and I won't be there because I will have messed it up. Okay, so what else do I want to tell you guys? 3 p.m. Eastern. All right, so that's noon for me. Okay, okay, okay. That's what I thought. All right, so we'll be there. If you come, be nice to me. <laughs> that's what I was wondering, Libby, because I feel like that one time, because someone's like, oh, no, that's not GMT. That's blah, blah, blah. Hopefully you forget where you are. Yeah. I, I know, Libby, but I want to make sure that when I put in 8 p.m. UK, there's only one of those. Because I was, it was wrong once. You know? I did check a world clock. And that's what it told me. But I was like, okay. <laughs> anyway, we'll figure it out. It should, be, it should be casual, right? I'm already getting sweaty thinking about it. All right, um, so I'll see you Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific, here to do sewing these together. It should be really fun. We're gonna do the whole sew through, be really fast. And um, I still owe you pictures of my husband in the utility jacket and the fleece pullover, so. Okay, okay, Melin. So there's just one time zone, all right. I don't know what that was then that happened to me. What was that noise? All right, well, I hope you guys are all doing good. I hope none of you are near these fires. We lost an entire town here yesterday, and we might be losing a whole town today. It's very intense. So be safe. They tell you to evacuate. Evacuate. Don't mess around. And, um, yeah, take care. All right? That's my, on my only gloom and doom thing I'll say today. So I'll see you guys Saturday. It was fun. Thanks for coming. Thanks for the donations. I really appreciate it, Heidi and Ray. And I'll see you guys then.